the floor of the 2011 Women in Aviation Conference. Let's take an opportunity here to talk to the uh, association that pretty much pioneered uh, women's entry into aviation and is full of a history that is frankly hard to chronicle at any one time. What's the state of the 99s these days? Well, I'm glad you brought up our history to start with because we are the, the oldest female pilots organization in the world and one of the oldest pilot organizations in the world. Begun in 1929. Our uh, motto, if you will, now is the 99s, inspiring women pilots since 1929. And our initial president was Amelia Earhart. Let's talk about today's 99s. Where does the organization stand right now at a very trying time for anybody in aviation, much less a woman trying to come up through the ranks? Well, the 99s has probably a great, one of the greatest assets, if you will, on helping put to any woman, young or not so young, in a career path, greater than any other female organization out there, because we have a scholarship fund known as the Amelia Earhart Memorial Scholarship Trust. The balance in that trust is currently over $4 million. Last year, it generated $180,000 in scholarships that went to 23 women. Mm -hmm. Women who wish to forward their career, if they have been a member for one year, can apply. What they do is write their own ticket. They write out what they want, how it's, where they want to do the training, why it fits into their career path at that time and then they can go submit an application as a member of the 99s. They would be funded either 100% or not at all. This coming year we only have 40 applicants. I just told you 23 won last year. So not only are the odds very, very good, but in addition to that you can get another scholarship. You're never precluded. We have AE scholarship winners who have received two and three scholarships. And you can also get these for college education. It's not necessarily for flying. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. How do you, as a leader of the 99s, keep an organization like this not only fresh, but relevant in a world that's changing <laughs> faster than the airplanes we fly? And it does change. You're absolutely right. It's finding ways, whatever ways we can, to get both the younger people involved, but also be really true, again, to those roots that we have in aviation, honoring our history. And I really think there's a lot of people who are drawn into that history and want to know more about it. So technology, as we all know, is a huge area. Whatever it takes to encourage communication between members, I think is the real key and staying in touch with people. What is it that people don't know about the 99s that you'd like to be able to tell better right now? Well, I just had an opportunity that I really look forward to is telling you about the AE scholarships, which was is a fabulous, fabulous part of our organization. Another piece, since we're here at Women in Aviation, which is a very career-oriented event, is something we call the Professional Pilot Leadership Initiative. We, you know, all we all take these things and shorten them down. So yes, it is the PPLI. But this is a mentoring program that is highly structured. It actually has entry dates and dates you graduate, and you work one-on-one -on -one with an individual in the area in which your career is focused. And there are definite activities within that, for those parameters. And you come out a stronger leader and also this looks fabulous on a resume for anyone who wants to work. Yes, if you want to work in aviation and you have this on your resume or an AE scholarship or both, oh my gosh, you got not just a toe in the door, you're beyond that, you've got the foot in the door. If you could pull out the 99's crystal ball and forecast where you'd like to be five and ten years hence, what you'd like to see both for the organization as well as the community that you serve, what are your goals? Most of those goals, I would say, are focused along the PR and membership areas. It's really building that membership up and finding those women. That's a job, and keeping those women as members. Those are our big focus right now, and also using public relations to get out the message about the 99s. That's the direction, those are the tools we're using to be able to continue with our um, 
with our mission. And that mission, I'm going to read it because I don't want to mess this up. It says, the 99s is the international organization of women pilots that promotes advancement of aviation through education, scholarships, and mutual support while honoring our unique history and sharing our passion for flight. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. What message do you want to send to a nine-year-old little girl who's looking at aviation like, yeah, this is all the stuff I want to do? There are so many opportunities, and I really want to stress for anyone looking at piloting as a career, beyond all the other aspects of aviation, even within pilotage, you also have not just scheduled air carrier airline work. There's all kinds of charter work and there's all kind of corporate work, and you can work with helicopters, you can work government. There is so many different angles. You could work as a bush pilot, say in Africa or in Alaska. You could work missionary work. So that's just parts of pilotage that you can look at beyond all the other aspects of aviation. So I highly recommend it. We know we're all going to be flying. We're not gonna stop flying as a world. So I do highly recommend them looking at all kinds of angles within aviation, whether it's getting to know, really get to know now weather. You can watch weather now and get to understand weather patterns and start getting information and watching what's act, you know, going on around you. Mm -hmm. Always do that. It's uh, all pilots and all aviation people seem to always watch the weather. So this would be a great place to start. Based on when I came into aviation, there was definitely a different perception of women who came to the airport. It was a very different time than it is today. Is it different enough? Are we finally achieving the equality that anybody with the, with the right mind is seeking for anybody who wants to fly? Are we there yet? It's a good question. I bet you could answer that as well as I could, but from a different side. I was lucky. I never saw that that other people saw. I was raised in the American West. It's a very can-do attitude. So I am probably not the best to answer, but what's fascinating to me now is talking to women from different countries. And there is where the answer is definitely no. We have so much work to do. When you start getting in, uh, for instance, uh, one of the ladies came over to me today and was telling me about putting in an application. And she is, uh, you know, a fully an ATP pilot. She's put in an application at Saudi Airlines. And the moment she hit the button, it came back as rejected. And you know why? Female. So I can tell you, no, we're not there yet. <laughs>